afternoon, good morning, evening, whenever you're watching this YouTube. Hey, we're going to be looking at another game that everyone is talking about. And honestly, I have lost hours to this game. So many hours lost to this game. Anyways, today we are looking at Outriders. Alrighty, and as general housekeeping, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. It helps out the channel. You know, this one here that you uh, subscribed to, perhaps, maybe already. Also, we do stream over on Twitch, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays. That's 3 p.m. start time. That's uh, Pacific. Alrighty. Also, we will be adding a new item to be looking at during our game reviews, and that's bugs. And the only reason is, is because, you know what, it seems to be coming up more and more often. Honestly, it's with the AAA titles, so maybe only on the AAA titles. What is Outriders? Well, Outriders is the new third-person looter shooter from Square Enix. You know, maker of games like Final Fantasy. They own the Hitman IP, Deus Ex. Please bring back Deus Ex. And, well, that's right, Marvel Avengers. Okay, well, they can't all be number one top hits. So, what is this game like? Well, this game is what would be created if you did your research for the last five years about this particular genre. And then you turned around and talked Destiny into having a baby with Gears of War or Division, whichever one accepted it. And then for some reason, The Last Airbender was really feeling left out and decided to spit on it to kind of mix up the DNA. Then you get, well, this, Outriders. The gameplay. Outriders is a fun third-person shooter. You run around and take cover, sometimes, and shoot waves of enemies. Those enemies, depending on their level, depending on their difficulty, will drop different gear. That will make you stronger. Rinse and repeat. Kill things, get gear, get stronger. Kill things, get gear, get stronger. You know what I'm saying? It's a looter shooter. This is what you get. You're gonna fight insurgents, mutated alien life forms, and well, pissed off wildlife. There's a lot of pissed off wildlife. All of this gives it enough variety to keep you engaged all the way to end game. Which gets us to what makes Outriders different. It's the skills that are for each class and the class tree that goes with that. You have the Technomancer, which is the class I chose, and it's kind of a ranger. I like the ranged attacks. You have the Pyromancer, which is a mage equivalent. Fire, go figure, pyro. You have the Trickster, which manipulates time and space and stabs things in the back. Can anybody guess what that is? That's a rogue. And, well, you have the Devastator. Meat shield, tough, I use rock. Actually, it's kind of a fun class. Each class is aligned with a different element, and they all have their own skill trees and abilities. And, well, after the story, there's a good amount of endgame that, well, keeps the game going for your quest for better loot. Music and sound. Well, the music is great during the cutscenes, mainly because it makes those scenes feel more big production, more like a... Hollywood movie than anything else, but during the game, and it's one of the reasons I didn't really use a lot of the music in this review until now. Yeah, this is the music. This is what you get often during the game, and it doesn't add anything to it, and honestly, it kind of stands out to the point where I just muted it. It wasn't worth it to talk. The sounds, well, the sounds are good. Everything's kind of varied in there. You're Perping wildlife, you crumbling rocks, the weapons, all of the weapons have the sound. I think that's where most of the focus was, is on the weapons and the abilities. When you use abilities like the Plague Rounds, which is part of the Technomancer, uh, you feel really powerful because of the sound. It changes and everything feels a little more just, mm. So I will say some of the sounds, they can be really repetitive. I mean, if you're waiting for a teammate in a particular area, you're gonna hear the same rock noise falling down every two seconds repeated and repeated and do you get the point 
All right. This game, for the look, well, it is shiny. It is really shiny. They wanted this game to look shiny. Particle effects are on every high-level weapon, whether it be lightning coming off of the thing or some sort of toxic aura around it. It's wonderful. It's great. It looks absolutely amazing on all of those. There's falling leaves and petals and stuff that go through. All the plant is swaying in the grass. and It's great. It is exactly what you would expect from a triple A title. And then it is all thrown out the window when your character's ponytail ends up clipping through your helmet because you decided he needed one. I don't know, have a top knot. I figure, why not? Or, you know, the cape that is part of the chest piece literally is falling into the shoulder blades that is designed as part of the same piece. Why are there collision problems with the... Never mind. Never mind, I don't know. I love how the game looks and it can be very impressive at times. Uh, and I think Outriders does a wonderful job of showing off what RTX and a powerful machine can do. And that's also for you next gen systems too, not just the PC. The feel, well, there is a decent story that is involved in this game. And you really do feel for some of the characters as you play through it. It does a fairly good job of going, hey, this is where you need to go next. Why are these questions here? How do I answer this? It keeps you going along, and that's what you want out of a story. I don't even think that I will mind playing through it again for a second or third time, building up another character. And right now, the runtime for the game, it's about 15 hours for the main story. And that's just the main story. That's not a lot of the side quests and everything. I think those add probably about four to five more hours on top of it. And there's plenty of collectibles, so if you wanted to run around for another, I don't know, 20 hours collecting pieces of paper, you can do that too. Once you get your characters dialed in, you feel pretty powerful in this game. Never really overpowered, unless you mess with your world tier, but you feel pretty strong. You gotta get it dialed in, you gotta get the right weapons, put the right mods on, but you feel pretty good. Now, that's where this game is a little more accessible to people, is in the world tier. Just like Diablo 3, you can adjust your tier so that, well, either the game is super, super easy, it's a breeze, but you don't get some of that really good gear. You get less loot, it's less quality, you get it. Or you put it on the possible hardest difficulty that you've absolutely unlocked, and yes, you will get the best gear. You will get the best quality gear, the highest levels on all of that stuff. You'll get more of it but those bosses are gonna make you pay for it. Bugs. This one's a new one for us. And originally, originally I didn't wanna talk about this. It's not something I really wanted to go over because I'm not a huge fan of focusing on the negativity of games. You either play games because you like them or you don't. You either don't buy it because it has so many bugs or you don't. But for me, I started thinking, what if the bugs could deter people from picking this game up? Or maybe there's enough bugs here for people to wait, but you should still play it. So, here we are. What bugs are in Outriders? Well, there are a number of them. First off, and it's one of the biggest things people are reporting, is that inventory is being emptied out. It's like you were robbed of all of your furniture from your apartment while you were out buying groceries. It's terrible, which is a huge deal. And I know they put out a few things, but I think it's still an issue for consoles mainly. Other problems, well, they're having problems with a few corrupt saves out there. I think that one has mostly been fixed, but it is still outstanding for a few, I guess. Um, game, cra game crashes are a huge thing. I, I had so many game crashes at the beginning that I almost wanted to start this video off with nothing but game crashes. Um, late sound triggers, you'll actually start an expedition and it won't actually make the sound until you're literally two, three seconds into it. And then all of a sudden you hear this big crash as it's supposed to open a gate. Those types of things happen as well. Uh, quest markers don't spawn. Terrain and character elements actually clip through each other. Cutscenes are preventing abilities from actually going off. So you'll come out of a cutscene and you can't use your abilities. Yeah, I know. Long list here. Um, another thing I've seen, AI will just drop from the sky. Other times, AI will literally just stand there and they won't attack you. They won't at all. Huh. And coming to my favorite, or technically least favorite, I'm being facetious about it, is collisions. There are collisions in this game. There are times where you're going forward or backwards, and 
you'll get stopped for no reason. You have no idea what's going on, and it will get you killed. That's things like, you know, that fence that's on the ground. It's an element. It's literally parallel to the ground, but now you can't walk over it. Normal people would be able to step on that, or at least step on it. Not here. You're stuck. Branches do the same thing in this game. It sucks. And it's not just for you. I've literally seen bosses, large bosses, get stuck on a rock. And they literally will not turn. They won't attack. They won't do anything. And, well, it makes it a really easy win for you. So, enough with the bugs. On to, that's right, our opinion. With all the bugs, you can be a bit trepidatious in picking up this game. And I understand that. But honestly, I've put in about 30 hours into the game and I finished my first character to level 30. I've played some of the end game for it. Uh, hell, I've even started a second character because I want to probably play some of this on our Twitch stream. Uh, it's down below. And I've had a great time with it. And it's taken over a lot of the time that I have to play games outside of streaming and the YouTube. So, honestly, I can't even wait to get together with some of my friends with the crossplay and actually finish some of this endgame. I'm actually waiting on them to finish the stuff. Is the game worth $60? Yes. Is it worth $60 right now? Well, maybe not. Be only because of the bugs that are in there. The rest of the game is actually really, really good. And honestly, right now, it is on Xbox Game Pass, so technically it's free for those who have paid that so it's really hard to pass up. Jump into this game while the player base is big. The matchmaking works well, and this game is much better with friends, for sure. YouTube, are you playing Outriders? Are you as invested in this game as I have been? Are you running into any of these bugs, and what do you think of the game? What class did you go with? You can let me know down below. Or, why are you not playing Outriders? Tell me the reason for that, too. Put it all in the comments. Alrighty, thank you again, YouTube. We'll see you next video.